Is 650B dead as a wheel and tire size? And if so, who is killing it? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, riding party pace and living the supple life, if you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. And just a quick note, we are so close to turning on the sign. I think we're about 3,000 away from 100,000 subscribers. And when that happens, we're gonna have a party and do a sign lighting. Okay, so let's talk 650B. I get asked this question a lot. Is 650B dying? Is it on the decline? And if so, how come? Is it still a viable tire size? So if you're still confused about 650B, basically it's a wheel and tire size that is slightly smaller than 700C, but offers lots of interesting advantages. This in my hand is a 650B wheel and on it there is a 650B by 48 millimeter tire. Taken as a whole, the diameter is the same as a 700 by 28 millimeter uh, wheel and tire combination. So it's not like 650B is drastically smaller. It's not like you're riding on a Brompton or a Moulton. It's actually equivalent to the outside diameter of your typical road tire. Where it's different, however, is this, the width. Most 650B tires come in 42 all the way up to uh, 50 millimeter tire widths, even larger in the mountain bike sizes. And what that gives you is just massive tire volume to play with. Basically, you get the nimbleness and handling of a road bike, all the supple cushioning and comfort with a wider tire. Another interesting advantage, since the wheel is smaller, it is consequently a stronger wheel with shorter spokes. And because of less material, it is also lighter. So it is practically a win, win, win. Another advantage is if you ride small frames, let's say 52 centimeter and smaller, you can run big tires like this without weird front end geometry. So typically to accommodate a wide tire on a small bike frame, they take the head tube and they kick it out. In mountain bike terms, it's called a slack head tube angle. And that's fine in mountain biking. But if you want a nimble road bike without a lot of wheel flop and that drunken goatiness feeling, you can only really achieve that wide tire and nimbleness combination with a smaller wheel and tire size like 650B. And lastly, another big advantage is that you can run wider tires and a fender without toe overlap. So listing all those benefits, 650B sounds pretty dang awesome. Why then do some people think it is dying? Why has there been such slow industry adoption? And why on the major performance oriented cycling websites and YouTube channels is everyone poo pooing 650B? So let's get into it. One of the first arguments is that there are now uh, more options in 700 by 42 or even 700 by 47. So essentially mimicking the tire widths that were once only available to 650B. So usually the argument is, well, if you can get it in 700, why would you get it in 650B? So while it's true you can get a similar tire, the overall package becomes much heavier and larger. Larger tire means more material, more weight, on top of that bigger wheel with more weight. So if you're a weight weenie, that's probably actually not something that you want. So my short response to that is yes, you now have an equivalent tire size, but at a cost, at a weight cost, at a structural integrity cost with the longer spokes. So it's not the same. And I would also add while there is more availability in the 42, 45 millimeter size, there are actually still very few 700 by 47 sizes when compared to 650B, where most of the tires usually come in 47, 48 or 50. And while the difference between 42 and 47 seems nominal, width-wise, you also have to take into account this giant cushion of air that you get with 47s. Another reason I'm not a big fan of 700 by 47 is because it is a larger diameter wheel. You also have to adjust the geometry so it doesn't ride like ass. Frankly, a larger wheel and tire increases the overall trail of a bike. And if you don't account for the larger diameter, the added uh, pneumatic trail, the, uh, the tendency for a wheel and tire size that big to stay more stable, you're gonna get a bike that rides kind of weird, that has a lot of wheel flop, that isn't very nimble. All that to say, you just can't slap a big wheel and tire and call it good for the day. Other things have to happen to adjust for that in order to keep 
the ride quality nice and fun and nimble. Another huge reason, especially for me, that I'm not a big fan of 700 by 47, 700 by 50 millimeter tires. As a shorter rider, as the wheels and tires get bigger, especially on gravel bikes, we're talking gravel bikes here, the geometry gets weirder and weirder. They have to make the head tube angle a lot slacker to prevent things like toe overlap. And with that, the front end handling gets more drunken goatee on the climbs. Basically, if you were to design a bike with 700 by 48 millimeter tires, and did the typical changes that the bike industry does without adjusting the rake for, e for each of the particular sizes, all the bikes on the small end ride completely different than the bikes in the middle end. Another big pro of these 700 by 48 millimeter uh, wheels and tires that will kill off 650B supposedly is the angle of attack bros, which is coming specifically from mountain biking. An argument basically boils down to more wheel, more better, roll over, more stuff. And while that is true, perhaps in a mountain biking context, if we're talking all road bikes and gravel bikes, which are generally ridden on roads of some sort, gravel roads, I think the angle of attack bro argument is a little bit overstated because I don't know about you, but when I ride and I see a rock, I try to steer around it. So unless you ride like a bull in a china shop with its eyes closed, then sure, go more wheel, more better. But if you have an iota of bike handling skills and you, you know, steer around obstacles, I think it's kind of a lame argument. All right, so I know what you're thinking. If 650B is so great, why has the adoption been so slow and why is it supposedly dead? So just to warn you, these are my opinions and thoughts. So the first one is the bike industry is fairly conservative and slow to change, except for when it comes to bottom bracket standards. Road bike tradition and mentality still dictates 700C as the de facto wheel. So for that segment of the market, harder to make them adopt new things. I think from the brand and business side, I can see where, you know, ordering multiple wheel sizes for a range of bikes becomes a skew nightmare and logistically just gets tougher and more expensive. And lastly, there is my 650B conspiracy theory, which I have shared with Jan. And I also brought it up with uh, the folks over at DT Swiss, and they seem to agree with me on this one. So hear me out. When you think of the bike industry, the people that manage brands, that design products, the bike media, where do they come from? They're all typically ex-racers of the mountain bike or the road bike ilk. Most of them, especially in the bike media, but probably across the board, are overwhelmingly male and also tend to be taller. So they totally don't see the benefits of this smaller wheel and tire size, especially for shorter riders. And I don't think they do it intentionally. It's not like some sinister act. I think it's an inherent bias that they're not aware of. I'll give you a quick analogy with pants. Let's say there was a magazine called Pants Fancy and all the editors and reviewers at Pants Fancy were six feet tall, were really slim, wore size 32 inch waist pants with a size 31 inch inseam. And let's say all of a sudden there is a crazy trend of 28 inch inseam pants and this tall pants fancy uh, reviewer had to review it. They'd probably say, yeah, it sort of fits. I don't get it. I prefer my 32 inch inseam pants better. So do you see what I'm saying? They're gonna be inherently blind to those advantages that a lot of the population experience. And while I don't have hard data uh, to support this, I do know that many bike editors are much taller than me. And usually when I request a review bike, there are no small sizes available. They all tend to be like 55 or, or 56. So that tells me as a shorter person, you know, trying to review bikes that they definitely cater to the taller bike reviewer, who is of course going to pan 650B because you know, they don't see the advantage. But that's what I think. Let me know what you think of my 650B uh, tire conspiracy. Am I wrong? Am I full of I'm sure you'll let me know. If you like this video or even if you hated this video, hit that subscribe button so we can turn on the light at 100,000 subscribers. And as always, keep the supple side down.